Yeah. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. The navigational aids. What's the problem? You a tyrant? <laughs> you guys know I have a pretty good history of supporting the police. But in this case, spoiler alert, they're wrong. The price is wrong, bitch. This body cam footage has been flying all over the internet and I've had a lot of people ask me, what do I think about it? What are your thoughts? What's your takeaway on this? And so I figured I'll just make a quick video, check out the rest of the body cam footage, my full sort of like alternate thoughts about how this could have gone or should have gone. I will stick at the back end if you're interested. Stick around. What's your name and date of birth? I don't have to give that unless Yes, sir. I'm I was investigating. You have reasonable Do you want me to put you suspicion? in handcuffs right now? Yes, sir, I do. What is your suspicion? It looks like you're carrying a gun in your back pocket. I'm stopping to make sure you're carrying it properly. You well, don't have, have you to... ensured that it's not a firearm? No, you keep turning so I can't see it. You don't have to be a d to me. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir. I'm have doing my job. Day. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put you in? He's right here. What was she stopped you for? For a walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really? present it, okay? Now she's asking me for to ID. Okay. I don't need the ID unless okay. there's reasonable, articulated suspicion and her that I have committed a crime and committing a crime and or about to do a crime. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay, and she's asking you for your ID. Well, now right. she has verified that I am not armed, okay. so there is no you problem. you have your ID or not? I do have my ID, okay. but you don't need it. Sir, are you legally bond? Yes, I am. Okay. I had to walk up here in the dark for jury duty, which was canceled. Why aren't you using your stick? You don't have to use your stick all the time? Well, not all the time. All right, Mr. Hodges. Was that that hard? It's going to be. I want your name and your badge number. You know, I'll put him in jail for resisting. Okay. All right, let's go. I want your name and badge number two, sir. You want to pull this out of my back pocket? Sure. Here, I'll grab your jacket for you too. Let's, let's put everything out on Front Street here real quick. We should not be existing in a place where we feel like it's papers, please. Guten Tag, Herr Jones. We have God-given rights that are articulated in the Constitution. And what is of the, the utmost importance to understand is that cops are to uphold and defend the Constitution. They're not there to uh, do the bidding or the marching orders of one individual person, be it a mayor, a governor, a president, whatever. That's not what they're there for. They are there to enforce the law upon those who would seek to interfere with the constitutional rights of others, okay? And in this case, that seems to have been not understood or, I mean, that's best case scenario. She just doesn't know, right? Or, 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 and the boss, the sergeant, or doesn't care. And either one of those is bad, but the second one is really, really bad. Now, you gotta understand, there's always gonna be like this perennial tension that exists between our God-given rights and the constitutional ways that we express them in this country and law enforcement, right? Like there's, they, they butt against each other in many different ways. And we have to to deal with that tension. We have to live in the tension because we don't want either extreme where it's complete anarchy or it's complete control, right? That is part of living in a free society. Uh, except when you're this dude on this day because wh whatever's going on here is a mess. Now, I will say this before I talk about her specific response is that when cops are called to these situations, I don't fault them for following up, right? They're in their patrol cars, that's their job. They get a call, they get dispatched, they go, they check it out. The call may come in like man carrying a gun in his back pocket, walking around kids, businesses, whatever. Whatever the call is, you follow up and you can even just drive by. You're putting eyes on yourself. You're not trying to like make a decision based on just the call. You have to go see it for yourself. And what seems to be the case from this is that she self-initiated the situation. I could be wrong, may have been a call, and I don't mind making contact with people and saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, the reason I the reason I like 
got out of my car and I'm talking to you is because it looked to me when I was driving by that something in your back pocket was a weapon. Not in this, I'm gonna leave the second amendment discussion aside for now because um, I think it's relevant, uh, related, but it's it's not direct to this case. This, there's, this is more about the right to ask for identification and the right to detain. So um, if she self-initiated this or if she was called there, once you introduce yourself and say, hey, here's what I'm checking out, then he clearly shows her what this is. Now, now we're going in the other direction. We're not going further in enforcement. Now we're backing up because of the reality that now the, the reasonable, as he puts it, and articulated suspicion of a crime happening is disappearing. And so the more that disappears, the less we should be advancing in this. So we don't want to go down this path, right? I have no problem with someone who believes or has a suspicion that something is going on, making contact with somebody, but based on that contact, then we have to go the other direction when we realize we're wrong, right? Instead, they doubled down, whether it was ego, whether it was ignorance, um, either way, they abused that man's rights and he handled it pretty well. Like he didn't resist. It's a good example for people when they're, when they're getting the shaft, Hey, they, they didn't resist, fight it this way because now this video is everywhere and I think that he's going to come out uh, on top of this uh, because, yeah, I mean, it's a mess. Sometimes you need a lot of video, a lot of information, multiple angles, more investigation to understand what happened, but just watching this in context and with the experience that I have and other cops that I have that have talked to this incident about, I'm very confident in saying these guys are in the wrong and setting a bad example for how cops should interact in situations like this. But what do you think? Maybe you know something I don't. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Maybe you think you agree, whatever. Drop it into the comments below wherever you're watching this. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.